Well, here you are, ready to start your Excel test. And I'm going to go through the process so that you'll have a, a good idea um, what you should have done if you got marked down in some areas. Okay, so first off, if I go through the individual steps, the first uh, few steps are to start with your theme, change it to Office, then um, change the sheet tab name to car savings which I've done here already and the next step is to change the font so you grab the, the entire sheet by clicking on the little arrow up here at the top go to Arial and change the font uh, next step was to change the sheet tab color and that would be to blue accent one darker 25% so where are we here? Accent 1, darker 25%, and there. Okay, so that's been changed. Um, now I'm using the autofill to enter the dates, I mean the, the months. So I grab the months and come across and fill in the, the, the uh, months of the year. The last cell H. 2 is supposed to have the word total. And now we are aligning the, the text. So we, we take that, that 2 row and we just have to do the 45 degree angle. And we've got it. And change the column width from B uh, B to G to 20, 121 pixels, so I'm right here. And this one was a real common one that people got marked down on because you just grab the columns like that and then the, the uh, marker for in between the rows and you'll see right now it's at 46 pixels. If you drag it across, you can easily get to 121 and then they're all at the, the right area. Now change the column A to 178 pixels. So you just go to A and again just bring her right up to 178 there. Uh, I'm now merging cell A1 through H1 here. Merge the cell and change the font in that row to Arial 16 points bold. So I'm bringing it up to 16 and making it bold. And the row height at 60, so I grab the area between here, bring it down to 60. And um, let's see, the cell color is blue, accent 1, lighter 80%. So if I come to blue, that's accent 1, I think this is the color, right? but yeah, there you go, 80%. And it should be centered vertically and horizontally. And here's your horizontal. Now I'm on step 17 and I'm going to do row 2. Row 2 is supposed to be um, Arial 10 points, bold, blue, accent 5, darker 25%. So 10 points, bold, color is blue, 25% right there. Okay, now I'm still on A2 through H2, and I need to underline the cell. So I'm going to come up to my line, and the color is supposed to be... was that line color accent one darker 50% so I think that's this is darker 50% right here that's the line color and I can just come in here let's see that would be a look on it this way got my line click and I don't care if you did any of the lines but as long as it's underlined 
and not the text is underlined. I wanted the cell underlined. Okay, so we're there. And the number format currency, okay, the number formats were supposed to go here um, on the totals and the totals here. Those are supposed to be currency. So if I come in and I put in currency and these have the dollar sign. Now the others that don't are the ones that are not totals. And it does give you the cell ranges, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's a little bit quicker. And it's currency again without the dollar sign. That'll give you the comma style. Okay. So now we wanted to do uh, row four, um, <clears throat> and here it is, and row four is supposed to be uh, the cell color for row four is blue accent one, darker 50%, so that one's that one, and the text color is white. And it's supposed to be um, Arial 11 points bold. So it's 11 points. Got to make it bold. <clears throat> now, just to make this easier, the, the same format came down here. Uh, a couple of lines down from that. All right, so now we need to do row 9 and 13. So if we went... 9 and 13. I just grab, was it the whole row? Uh, yeah, the whole row. Okay. We've already formatted the currency. So here we are 9 and 13. And we needed to do the row height on this one, which is supposed to be 30. It does that. All right, so uh, the cell A9 and A13 is supposed to be, oh, I didn't get the 30 on this one. I must not have had it selected. Let me go here. Just about there. wobbly. Okay, so um, <clears throat> a 9 and 13, you're supposed to be bold, and it's 11 points, and that does it. Okay, so now we're on step 24. Uh, row I, uh, I15, and that's, I did that one, too, so we, we've got that one done. And then we're on step 25, which is the percentages. You're supposed to do these um, percentage style and two decimal places, so you can just increase the decimal two places, and you've got that one. Um, number format, uh, we've done that one. I did that was comma style. Now, I, <clears throat> this this part is the part that I saw most of the mistakes on, and that was in the material <clears throat> in the expenses. You should have used the um, you should have used the auto um, the the absolute cell references, and that's what wasn't happening for a lot of people. So I just want to demonstrate it. So if you equals the orders times the material, whenever I come down to that assumption section, I got to hit my F4 function key. And that does that one. So let me do it again. Equals the orders times the patterns. And that's an assumption. So F4 function key. And this one is equal the orders times the retirement. It's an assumption. 
f4 function key. And this one, food and clothing equals the orders times the food and clothing. And that's f4 function key again. And then we had a total here. So we needed to do an auto sum. And now we have the profit. And the, the profit was the orders minus the expenses. And that gives you the profit. Now note that that did not have any any absolute cell reference, and that's because it, it isn't. It's going to change. It's it's always all of those are going to change. Okay. Now the savings, and that was um, I think the profit. Uh, let's go down here and see what the formula was. I gave you as a kissed is twenty five percent times the profit, so it would be equals uh, 0.25 times the profit okay and that's still it's not an assumption so it does no f4 and now we need to do the bonus and the bonus said um, the if function okay if and we have a logical test so we're saying if uh, the savings is greater than 2000 then they get $250 if not they get nothing so you just need always have to have a true and a false portion otherwise it will come up with the word false and that did happen to some people okay now your total savings is going to be equals the uh, savings plus whatever if they got the bonus and if you did a, an auto sum and just use those two um, I would have given you that as well okay so now I just have to take this whole row and copy it across and all of my formulas come in and that's really, I, I, you know, that, that, that's just a, a way I, I would like to see you get into that habit of doing it that way. Okay, now, now we need to do the auto sum. And again, here, all I would have to do is highlight the row or the column and auto sum, and it'll know to go across, and it, and it did. See, so it went through and, and did all of that. Now, the next process was to, to uh, copy this sheet. So you had to hold down your control key. See, I get that little plus, and I copy, I just drag it over and copy the sheet. And I call this sheet uh, goal, car savings goal. Now, you're going to notice some differences in this next part where the uh, um, the uh, the pie chart the charting features in my version are different than yours because I I have 2016 on my computer and so that um, if you're using 2013 the charting features in Excel are quite a bit different but the concepts are still the same um, see if I if I was to grab this for a pie chart, which is the area you were supposed to chart, was just the orders, I needed to grab the labels as well. Or if I don't do that, then it won't come up with the legend. And a lot of people were marked down for the legend. So here's my pie chart. And in this version, I have a few different options that come up. And if I look, um, well, I got, well, let me do my chart title first. My chart title was supposed to be, uh, where's my chart title on the list here? Um, it, the chart title is sales orders. Okay, so I come in, I cl just click in the title and type in the word sales orders. 
Okay, now I wanted this to be an exploded pie. So in this version, I, I just selected the um, portion of the pie, go over to this little series options, and then I just have to go to explode it. The other version actually had a, a, uh, uh, an option to choose an exploded pie, and that was the difference. Now, now that I'm in the series, I can go ahead and do those data labels, and that I would do by right-clicking this group and make sure they're all selected to do it, and I add data labels. And when I do that, I also have an option to format the data labels to a different value, which I added percentage. And I already had show the leader lines, leader lines on there and, and the best fit. So if I got the percentage in there, then I'm in good shape. Now, then one of the... Um, next steps was to color the sheet tab. Green, green accent 6, darker 50%, 50%. So, or one of the steps, it wasn't the next step, but, but it's green accent 6, darker 50%. So it's this one. There's my, there's my uh, sheet tab color. Okay, um, now what I wanted to do was that uh, step two section where we're, we're calculating the what if function. And all I, I want my answer to be right here because I'm saying, okay, it's the total savings needs to be um, 16,084.49. So I just grab that cell, come into my data option and choose the what if analysis and a goal seek. And this is where I type in the value of 1684.49. And it's by changing the materials. That's what the instruction said. And we just click OK. And that is done. I just leave it. And this sheet is finished. The only thing that needs to be finished on the whole exercise is the um, the printing specifications. Uh, a lot of people try to pass this one off, but I kind of know what I'm looking for. So what you want to do is group the sheets first and page layout. If you'd followed the header footer up, uh, instructions that I gave you before, you would know that you can go to landscape, uh, fit to one, and then we had under margins, horizontally and vertically on the page, and you also have your header footer option. And my instructions stay say to create a footer for the two sheets that is set up with your name on the left, so it should have had your name here, and then the center section um, should be in the center, and I should have seen this code in there. And on the right section, um, it should have the file name and the sheet tab name. So I would come here, there's my file name, hit enter, and put in the sheet tab name. And that's what I was looking for on this exercise. Now I click OK. And if we were to preview them, these, since these are grouped, both sheets have exactly the same settings. And I just have to click OK again, and then ungroup my sheets. And that would finish the test with 100%. You just have to upload it to Moodle to get your last two points. That's the end of the demonstration. I hope it helps. Have a nice day.